this video, I want to go over writing research objectives, or at least give a few examples of some that I have previously written. And why don't we first look at two that I wrote in one of my statistics classes that I took when I was in college. And this specifically deals with, and I might as well have the data set here open, and that one not being this one. Actually, uh, I might have that real one downloaded on here. No, I do not. Let me download that very quickly. There we go. This data set. I'm just going to ignore the fact that it was just not open in Excel. But, uh, we have here is the relationship between Hogwarts House, being Hufflepuff, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and the number of university applications submitted. So, on this data set, I looked at the number of university applications submitted and Hogwarts House. Now, for something like this from this data set, and I'm going to have to tab over a bit until I find them. But uh, let's see. University applications being right here, and then Hogwarts House was someplace else on here. Here it is. And here. Um, that being one of my research questions, right? Now, just reading that wouldn't necessarily immediately tell us what type of hypothesis test this was, but due to the fact that I have four groups, and I wanted to work among those four groups the, using the number of university applications submitted, this is an example of an ANOVA research question. this type of research objective that I had in here. This was something that was specifically looked at as an ANOVA hypothesis test. In this case I had a total of four, four means for that. Uh, for is there a relationship between the average number of slices of pizza eaten per week and the number of Facebook visits per day? So for something like this, so is there a relationship between average number of slices of pizza in per week and the number of Facebook visits per day? Well, you could go down a bit to find that um, this had used a linear regression analysis based upon that. So this one here was a linear regression analysis, specifically looking at the ANOVA table from this linear regression. All right. Again, that was just from this data set here involving from uh, Duke University from, I believe that was the spring of 2015. Likewise, for something such as, let me open this one, here it is. This particular project, for a separate um, class when I was in college, this one deals with this math placement test. However, though, you might notice something about this particular data set. This one has a whole bunch of missing data. All right, and of course, naturally, if it was, um, if the data that was missing had nothing to do with your project, do you necessarily have to remove it? I mean, that depends on what you're actually just trying to find. But like how my first one in here refers to the math placement exam and the SAT math score, both of these have missing data. All right. So back when I looked at this data set, and this one had originally oh, a 
lot of data, as you can see. Never ending here. Um, but what I had to do for this was I had to first delete all this data that is completely missing. Which means sometimes I'm doing data entries that have one or not, or if it only has one or the other, or neither. As you can see, it's several thousands long. Let's see how far, got, far down it goes. Uh, one, 2,697. So, very long, very long data set. But the idea from it, though, is I deleted the data that was missing. And that brought it down to a much reasonable value, as you could probably assume. But, looking at this data set, my first research objective for this was, can the score in the MathMax placement exam be predicted from the interaction between the SAT MathMax score of the student and their associated adjusted GPA? So, now this one here, we, we would have to parse that down a little bit. Okay, I'm talking about variables including math placement exam, and SAT Mathematics score, and associated adjusted GPA, and this is referring to something known as an interaction. Special terminology right there. This is also a linear regression model. However, however, it's a special linear regression model. So this is linear regression. Well, specifically, I should call it this. Multiple linear regression analysis. And this includes an interaction term. All right. You might be wondering, what on earth does that even mean? And we'll be getting to that later on in the semester. But what that means is we would have an equation that looks something like this uh, y hat is equal to beta sub zero being our y intercept plus beta sub one times x sub one which will be one of our variables plus beta sub two times x sub two that being the second of our variables and for the interaction term that takes a third coefficient, beta sub 3, and multiplies it by x sub 1 times x sub 2. So we would have a linear regression model that looks something like this. Naturally a bit more, I mean, a lot more numbers than that, but that's what the model looks like. Uh, for, does the average high school rank differ among the different courses and gender? This, this one looks like a, uh, a pretty strange one to look at, right? This one here looks like a pretty strange one here to look at. And in order for us to accurately look at this particular um, research objective, as I go to my second one on here. This one does a little something different with it. But since gender is indeed a categorical variable, and typically when it comes to any type of statistical analysis, a categorical variable as such tends to not be something that we want to, uh, well, use too often. But, Something like this, specifically, is a two-way ANOVA test. And this two-way ANOVA test is used with applying a numerical value to gender. That way, we would actually have our um, ANOVA actually calculate correctly. Alright, these are four research objectives that I have previously written. Again, let me make 
which should they actually readable. There we go. All right. So those are just four that I have previously written. But you might be wondering to yourself, how about one that you haven't previously written that you might just, I don't know, find on the spot? Well, let's look at something like coronavirus uh, cases, such as here in the state of Connecticut. You can see that today's amount, the total number of the total number of cases that we have is three thirty thousand six hundred and twenty one, which will add an increase of six hundred and forty eight. Something such as this, we could look at the um, for something like this, we could, for example, compare the Connecticut numbers to a different state. So, for example, how does, and I'm going to, um, you know, I don't need to include that yet. How does the Connecticut uh, COVID-19, or the that new coronavirus, the Connecticut COVID-19 cases compare to, let's say, New York's, uh, to the New York COVID-19 cases. And something like that would be an example, uh, depending on how, the way, which way we do it, this would be an example of a two mean t test in order to determine that particular one. Or we could look at specific counties here in the in Connecticut. And if we want to do something such as I don't know. Let's say, is there a relationship between county in Connecticut and the number of COVID-19 cases? Something like that is an example of an ANOVA test like my first one up on here. Alright, so these research objectives need to, depending on what you are referencing, you first need to find a data set. Okay? You first need a data set, but based on that data set, you then need to come up with a research objective about something that you find interesting or something that you th want to find out more information about. So, specifically, the research objective. Research objective needs to be uh, something interesting about the data set that you wish to explore. And that 100% totally depends on whatever you are thinking with regards to the data set that you chose. There is that. Or it could be something that. Um, Maybe it's a topic that interests you, such as something for, let's say, even future career prospects. And after all, depending on where you want to eventually go with respect to your career, having even something such as a statistical analysis might be something useful, especially with, within a data science career. Might be useful to have something like that that you could show a prospective employer, like, oh, hey, look at this. I tested the uh, coronavirus cases that we had back in uh, 2020 of that COVID-19, and this is the analysis that I made of it. It could be something that, you know, a future career prospect might uh, look at and go, gee, this is someone I should probably hire. So, something interesting about the data set that you wish to explore, a topic that interests you. Maybe it's something you have more questions about.
or it can even be something that has a lot of missing data. And you wish to see how the variables, um, how the variables are related or interact with each other, depending on what type of question it is that you're asking. So these research objectives, you first need to find a data set before trying to find them, to actually write these out. And then based upon the data set that you choose, you would then formulate those research objectives based upon that data set. Well, let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.